How's she going? Um, this is a little video is going to be off topic, but uh, it's about 7.3 power strokes. I like them. I prefer actually the older ones, the 7.3 IDI. They might be kind of prehistoric dinosaurs and don't have the most power. But they're very determined motors and uh, they'll pull anything. It might take a while to get you there, but you can work the snot out of them and it doesn't seem to ever hurt them. But uh, these days I've been driving a power stroke for about the last 10 years and uh, they're great. The only thing that'll ever leave you on the side of the road is sensors. So if you're driving and she just dies, more than likely it's one of these sensors. So this is a cam position sensor. Usually it'll fire back up or you wait a bit and it fires back up. It's one of these. Um, they take one 10 mil bolt. You can change them out in literally five minutes. So um, not a bad idea to have one of these in your glove box. But uh, usually that's the symptoms of them. It'll just keep dying out all the time. Start, die out. Um, there's another sensor. I don't have it. It's one to show you, but it's called... Uh, I think it's a injection oil pressure sensor and it's on the driver's side kind of by the valley near the high pressure oil pump and same thing will happen same symptoms they'll just die out but usually they won't start when they're shot they're shot so there's a pigtail on it if you unplug it it'll go into like a uh, not a limp mode but it'll go into so, uh, like a program where it the truck will run and you'll be able to get to where you are so if your truck's running rough you can try unplugging that it'll go into the default kind of program and if it runs better you know it's that sensor or if your truck dies and you unplug it um and she fires back up you know it's that sensor and then there's this this is the in injection pressure rate injection pressure regulator on your high pressure oil side so this is kind of down in the front in the valley at your high pressure oil pump they have this little tin nut sometimes same kind of symptoms will happen with this and the nut comes loose and uh, you tighten your back up or whack it a few times and it starts working again uh, these are very expensive to buy and all these sensors a guy wants to go with Ford ones motocraft ones the Chinese ones are no good the you'll get two three hundred thousand miles on the the Ford ones you'll get uh, You'll be lucky if you get 20,000 miles on the Chinese ones. But anyhow, you can rebuild these too. There's not much to them. There's some O-rings and uh, that type of thing. So this is how they go together. you got to take them all apart when you uh, put them in your motor. But as you see, you need a special wrench to get at it. Or a special socket. So what I do, I'm not going to go spend some money on some expensive wrench to use, you know, a couple times in my life. So what I do... And a lot of these sensors I do this for, you need special sockets or to, uh, to remove them. So I will get a socket such as this one that fits. And this is a three quarter inch drive, I believe. And what I do is I weld the nut to it. So you take it all apart. This goes through. Then you put a wrench on the end and you unscrew it and you're good to go. I've uh, done similar kind of things I think on an old GM 6.5 diesel 2 to pull the injectors out. I, I built something like this because you need a 30 some millimeter deep socket and uh, it's kind of a special one so to fit the injector. So I've done things like this on them too. But yeah it's a good little trick for a guy with a power stroke. So yeah, most of the time, I'd say nine times out of ten, if you're on the side of the road, it's one of these sensors. It's uh, it's nothing to do with uh, your high pressure oil pump or anything like that. And the fuel pumps in those trucks are awesome. They seem to last a very long time. So yeah, like I say, some shitty little sensor like this can keep your 8,000 pound Super Duty from going down the road. So um, if you're making long trips... You might want to have a spare and you might want to know how to change it and uh, have the tools to change it. Another thing, starters on 7.3s. Um, we use kilometers up here, but uh, the original starter had 350,000K before I shit the bed. So that's uh, 
I don't know, over 250,000 miles. And uh, you get a new one, and you literally have to change it, like, every 10,000 miles. They're just absolute garbage. And that, my truck starts instantly, like, uh, it has good glow plugs and everything. It isn't like I'm cranking it, cranking it, cranking it, and burning the starters up. They're just junk. They're absolute junk. So, a spare starter might be not a bad idea, because uh, I've had them, no warning signs, nothing. Just working great, shut it off, walk into the store, come out, and just click. Nothing. And there's nothing you can do to to get her going again. You can beat it all you want. It doesn't work. And alternator, same thing. Uh, stock alternator, I had, I think, 420,000 kilometers on it. So, uh, about the same thing. 250,000 miles or so on it. And uh, I changed out the stock one for, you know, some rebuild one at the parts store because I couldn't wait to get a good one. And 10,000 miles down the road, the same shit. Alternator's gone. And, uh, yeah, for some reason, when that thing discharges, it doesn't have a warning light or anything come on or the battery light. Don't ask me why. So it doesn't even give me a warning. So a spare alternator probably wouldn't be the worst thing to have either. But uh, for the most part, though, these sensors are what's going to keep you from staying between the ditches. So, all right. Have a good one. Till next time.